Would you join me in prayer? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today we are looking at the fifth line of the Lord's Prayer, which is, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And one of the first questions that we can ask about this line is, why do we need to pray for God not to lead us into temptation? Does that mean that God is leading us into temptation? Why would a good God do that? And what do we really mean by this line in the Lord's Prayer? Well, these are all fair questions when it comes to this part of the Lord's Prayer. In fact, they are questions that were being discussed by the early church communities. And we know this because some of these questions show up in the epistles, which are the letters that we find in the second half of the New Testament. For example, James chapter 1 verse 13 addresses this and clearly tells us that no one who is tested should say, God is tempting me. This is because God is not tempted by any form of evil, nor does God tempt anyone. Rather, everyone is tempted by their own cravings, and they are lured away and enticed by them. And so here in this passage from the letter of James, we see that we actually get two answers to these questions. The first answer is that no, God does not lead us into temptation. But the second answer is because we're capable of leading ourselves into temptation, are we not? Indeed, James is pointing out here that it is not God who leads us into temptation, but sometimes we lead ourselves into temptations by following our own desires. And so if it is not God who leads us into temptation, then how do we make sense of this line in the Lord's Prayer? Well, as one commentator pointed out, we need to put a comma after the first two words. In fact, on the screen here, if you see the, the sermon title today, I've already inserted that comma for us. Said we need to put that comma in the line so that it does not read, lead us not into temptation, but rather so that it reads, lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You see that comma in the middle of the phrase puts a different emphasis on this line, where the emphasis is now on those first two words of lead us. Because you know, when we are praying this line of the Lord's Prayer, this is really what we are praying for. We are praying for God to lead us. Again, not in the ways of temptation and evil, but rather in the ways of the kingdom of God. For as it is with the rest of the Lord's prayer, this is a kingdom prayer. And each of these lines relate back to God's kingdom in some way. And so when we pray for God to lead us, specifically in the context of the Lord's prayer, we are praying for God to lead us in the ways of God's kingdom. Now to help us flesh this out a little bit this morning, I want to turn to this beloved psalm, Psalm 23. Now traditionally, traditionally, we might not think of Psalm 23 as being about God's kingdom. But you know, like the Lord's Prayer, we can read this psalm with our kingdom lens on. We can read this psalm in light of God's coming kingdom. Because there's actually quite a lot of kingdom imagery in this psalm. In fact, right away, the very first line says, The Lord is my shepherd. And when we say the Lord is my shepherd, we are acknowledging that the king is not our shepherd, right? King David's not our shepherd. The ways of the world are not our shepherd, but God is our shepherd. 
And to say that God is our shepherd is to say that we want to be led in God's ways. And then immediately the psalm goes on to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. And again, in just this very short line, we see glimpses of God's kingdom. Glimpses of God's kingdom where there's always more than enough to go around and where all of us always have what we need. And then the psalm continues, he lets me rest in grassy meadows and he leads me to those restful waters. And again, in these two lines of the psalm, we have images of God's kingdom. Two images, in fact, that I see in this line. The first image is this beautiful image of peace of the peace of God's kingdom, where places are not destroyed by violence, but rather where we can come and have those restful grassy meadows. But in addition to this, I really like the way that the common English Bible, the version of the Psalm that we read this morning, I like how they translate these verses. Because in this version, it specifically says, let me rest in grassy meadows, and lead me to those restful waters. And I like this word rest because it reminds us of God's Sabbath rest. You know, rest in this psalm is more than just that take a nap kind of rest, but rest in this psalm really is the Sabbath rest of God's kingdom the kind of rest that reminds us our value is not centered on what we can produce or how much we can produce, but rather that our value is centered in our identity as beloved children of God. Again, this kind of rest is the rest in which no one is exploited for gain or profit, but in which the humanity of every single person is acknowledged. This is the kind of rest that we find in God's kingdom. I think it's the kind of rest that the psalmist might have been hinting at in this phrase. And then if we keep going right at the heart of this psalm, we have echoes of our line from the Lord's prayer today. Echoes of that line of God leading us. Again, not into the ways of temptation, but rather in those paths of righteousness. Or as one Hebrew scholar put it, to lead us in the paths of justice or in the ways of God's kingdom. Because at the heart of Psalm 23 is this reminder that God, the good shepherd, does lead us and leads us in those right paths. And then finally, at the end of the psalm, we are told that God sets a table for us in the presence of our enemies, that God sets that six-course meal where we can come and have our heads bathed in oil and our cups are so full that they spill over. And again, here, I can't help but think of that kingdom image of the festive banquet where everyone can come and get their fill. Indeed, Psalm 23 is a kingdom psalm, a psalm about what it means to have God lead us in paths of righteousness. And so when we go back to the Lord's Prayer and when we pray this line of the Lord's Prayer, we can call to mind this imagery from Psalm 23. We can call to mind this imagery of the good shepherd who leads us in these particular ways. But did anyone notice that I left out part of the psalm just now? Did anyone notice that I I didn't talk about that valley of the shadow of death? Yeah, I I left that part out because as we think about God's kingdom, we don't think about having to walk through a valley of the shadow of death. And yet, I think this does relate a little bit to this kingdom image. It does tell us something about what it means to walk in God's righteous paths. Because as Diana Butler Bass writes, 
To follow in God's shepherding rule means to walk in opposition to sin and evil and death. And to walk in these paths of righteousness means that we will have to come face to face with those who oppose God's kingdom. Perhaps we may even have to confront that opposition as we try to do God's work in the world. And so, as the psalm says, we too might have to walk through that dark valley, through the valley of the shadow of death as we do God's kingdom work. But again, as the psalm reminds us, we do not walk through that valley on our own, but it is God who walks right next to us. And so we do not have to fear, for we know that God's rod and staff will protect us, and that God will deliver us from those who would want to oppose or destroy God's kingdom here in our midst. And so again, when we go back to the Lord's Prayer, we can once again call to mind this imagery from Psalm 23. We can call to mind this image of the shepherding God who protects us and delivers us and saves us from all that which opposes God's kingdom. For indeed, I think this is what it means for, to have God lead us in this prayer. Specifically, when we pray this line from the Lord's Prayer, we are praying, lead us, not into temptation, but rather in the ways of God's kingdom. And deliver us, protect us, walk with us when we come face to face with all that which opposes your kingdom. For even though it can be tempting for us to walk in our own ways, when we let God lead us, we will let God lead us in the paths of righteousness and deliver us from all of those obstacles that stand in our way. And so this is what it means to pray this prayer of this line as, that is part of the Lord's Prayer. But you know, when you start praying in this way, you better be prepared for God to start leading you. You know that phrase, maybe be careful what you wish for. Maybe be careful what you pray for, because when you start praying for God to lead you, you just never know exactly where that leading might take you. Actually, we do know where it will take us. It will take us in the ways of the kingdom of God. And so today I want to share a story with you about how I have seen God leading us, particularly here at First United Methodist Church, in the ways of God's kingdom, and how God was leading us maybe even before we realized it with a little story about our movie nights. Now, I know I've talked a lot about movie nights. It's just such a good example. I can't help but share these stories from our movie nights. But I want to share a little bit about what happened before we began doing movie nights today. So for those of you who might not know, on December 15th, I got a call here at the church asking if we could open our basement uh, that night, about four hours later, uh, to keep people who were out on the streets with nowhere else to go warm and safe during one of the coldest weeks of the year. And after saying yes to that call, we have now had 31 movie nights. We just had two more this weekend with our amazing partners and community volunteers who have come to make these nights possible. But you know, our saying yes to this ministry did not happen in a vacuum. And I really do believe that God was leading us to do this work, maybe even before we realized it. For example, back in last May, we as a church started a process of discerning our why statement, of discerning our mission and purpose in the world. And together we came up with this statement of turning closed doors into open tables where everyone belongs. 
And this statement laid the groundwork for us as a church community to be prepared to host something like movie nights, where literally closed doors were being open to welcome people in. But in addition to this, God was continuing to lead us and continuing to prepare us for that call on December 15th through our worship series in Advent. Because in Advent, we were talking about angels and we were talking about what it means to be angels among us. And you know, I had planned that worship series way back in August of last year. I had known for a long time that we were going to be talking about angels. And yet I didn't know until December 15th that perhaps there was a reason for that. Perhaps God was preparing us and leading us to say yes to this call to be angels right here in our own community. And then third, I know that personally, God was leading me to say yes to this call because God kept putting some people in my path who were reminding me of all the reasons why churches should do something like this. Have you ever had that experience where God just keeps putting people in your path? You kind of kept keep getting the same message over and over. Maybe you're not sure why, but eventually you look back on it and you go, I think God was preparing me for this. I think God was putting those people in my path for a reason. Perhaps maybe even to push me beyond my own temptations and to push me and to remind me about the kingdom work that is important for us to be doing. And so when that call came, we were already prepared to say yes. When that call came, we were already ready because God had been leading us in this direction for months. And so as a church community, we already know what it means to pray this line. We already know what it means to open ourselves up to be led in God's kingdom ways. And God has been faithful, in fact, in leading us in these opportunities and presenting us with these opportunities to do God's kingdom work right here in our midst. For indeed, to pray this line is to pray that we will be led by that good shepherd and that together we will all work so that that kingdom table might be known right here in our midst. And so today, with all of this in mind, with those images of the Good Shepherd from Psalm 23, with those images of deliverance from that valley of the shadow of death, with those images of what it means for us to be led by God right here in this church and in this community, we again pray this line from the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And when we pray this, we trust that God will do that leading and that God will deliver us from any obstacles that stand in our path as we continue to work for God's kingdom right here in our midst. For you just never know how our God, how that good shepherd may already be leading us in the ways of God's kingdom. May it be so. Amen.